Thank you. Get my hardware set up here. So the goal of ROSA is to unfurl for the first time in space a new solar panel technology. And while at the same time understanding better how this new deployment technology works in the space environment. So the primary technology that we're demonstrating on orbit is what's called high strain composite mechanisms. This is an example of one of the full scale tubes, the, the full scale structure that's used to deploy the wing or unfurl the wing. And I will demonstrate it for you here. So as you begin to unfurl the tube, it naturally wants to unroll, but yet it's compact when it's stowed, which is the, the nature of the high strain is that it can be stowed to a compact package for launch. So I'll start here. On orbit, we would deploy much slower than that. <laughs> yeah, deployment takes about four minutes on orbit. Um, so there are several different science objectives we hope to achieve. Uh, one of them is that uh, we want to better understand this deployment behavior. One of them is actually retraction, so you get a sense for how that works. So we want to better understand the deployment behavior, and the reason for this is large structures like this one uh, cannot really be tested on the ground. They collapse under their own weight. They're designed for space loads and not ground-based loads. So engineers get around this today by adding some additional reinforcements to the structure, but that always creates questions of whether this thing will actually deploy reliably once you get on orbit and you remove these additional supports. So that's the reason why we really need the microgravity environment of space, and it's the microgravity combined with the extreme temperature environment that we really need. We really need space station. We really need, we really need on orbit flight to, to test and demonstrate. So that's, that's a full scale tube there. Uh, this is a 110 scale model of the wing and it gives you a better sense. I'll deploy it for you here. So that's essentially the deployed wing on orbit. Um, ours will be 15 feet long by five and a half feet wide. So uh, deployment is one of the science objectives. Uh, one of the other science objectives is to measure and understand the structural dynamics of this wing. So when a satellite maneuvers on orbit, it stresses whatever long structure is attached to it. That could be a solar ray, it could be a reflector antenna, it could be a radar antenna, it could be a long instrument boom. It, it stresses that array, and that, that long structure responds by vibrating. I don't know if you could see that. But we really want to precisely characterize that vibration signature of this solar ray wing. It's a characteristic of the stiffness and mass of the structure. Um, and the reason is because satellite designers or guidance navigation control experts, they really need to understand those vibration signatures so they don't lose control of their spacecraft. Um, so they have to precisely predict it. So we are uh, gathering data on the structural dynamics to refine our prediction models to help implement ROSA in the future. So that's the second science objective. The third one is we want to better understand how the wing behaves when it transitions from full shadow to full sunlight. So uh, a structure like this that's so thin, I mean these composites are only a few millimeters thick, this, this blanket material is only a few millimeters thick, that means it heats up really fast um, when it moves from shadow to sunlight. and that. That, that rapid heat up in a matter of uh, you know, dozens of degrees in a matter of a few seconds can again cause the wing to, to shudder a bit. It's what we call thermal snap. Um, if Rosa happens to be attached to a uh, telescope like Hubble, uh, well, we don't want to bump the camera, we'll just put it that way. So, uh, so we want to make sure that, that there is no thermal snap behavior on Rosa. Uh, but Rosa is primarily a power generating array so we also want to measure the, the power production performance of this wing. And we're only populating it with about 10% um, fill factor of cells, which is about 300 watts. Uh, a full array of this size would be about 300, or I'm sorry, 3 kilowatts of power. Um, so we just want to make sure that those cells have survived launch, which can be on the order of 50 times greater than, than the accelerations on Earth. Pretty violent. Um, so that's, that's our science objectives. 
Uh, as far as the uh, on-orbit operations go, uh, we will be removed from the Dragon trunk approximately nine days after docking. Um, after being removed, the uh, ground-based robotic arm operators will position Rosa away from station. Uh, we will command deployment after having checked out our initial flight computers. Uh, like I said, deployment will take about four minutes. Um, during deployment, station cameras will be watching the wing. We'll be looking for any unexpected movements and, and motions. We expect it to be a smooth, uh, linear, slow deployment. But we'll be watching with station cameras anyway. Um, so after deployment, we will begin our dynamics experiments. And uh, those dynamics experiments will be actuated by oscillating the base of the, of the Rosa payload. So if you could bring up the stowed wing view. So uh, there we go. So at the, at the base of that wing is a motor that oscillates the base uh, back and forth at a specific frequency. And uh, what we're really doing is watching um, the tip of the wing moving back and forth as a, a, as a response to that oscillation at the base. And we'll be doing that with some accelerometers, um, but primarily with a technique that we call photogrammetry, which can move off of that image. We'll get to the deployment in just a minute. We have a deployment video for you. So this is uh, a sample of the actual blanket. So you see it's an open weave mesh, and there's a capton joined to that mesh, and then these, these photovoltaic cells. In this case, they're aluminum mass simulators. But you see those white targets there. We, we're using those for a technique called photogrammetry, where at least two station cameras will be looking at the wing at all times during these dynamics experiments. And it'll be tracking the position of these targets. So with a triangulation technique, we can then back out later what the precise relative position of these targets is and then reconstruct the vibration frequencies and amplitudes of the wing. So we'll be running those dynamics experiments in full sun, in full shadow, and then during eclipse exit. And um, that's basically our operations. Uh, so why don't we go to the deployment video, give you a real-time sense of how this wing deploys. So that, that's the actual speed there. Uh, we have some, some dampers that restrain the strain energy in those tubes a little bit. So in the center there is that photovoltaic blanket, and you start to see some of those mass simulators unrolling. Um, accelerated here. You see those white, uh, white targets distributed on the blanket, those photogrammetry targets. And then near the end of deployment, uh, the wing uh, slow it down again here. And uh, what you really see at the end is not much, uh, not much at all, which is a good thing. Uh, we, we want the wing to be nice and controlled, and we don't want any subtle dynamic motions near the end of deployment. So, uh, so that's that's the ROSA experiment. I, I did want to mention just briefly a little bit about the applications. Um, the fact that this is a really is a multi-agency experiment. Um, this wing has been developed by funding from NASA STMD, from the Air Force Space and Missile Systems Center, and of course AFRL, Air Force Research Lab, which is the primary sponsor. Um, you know, the reason all those agencies are involved is because all satellites need power, all spacecraft need power. And the, the traditional method of generating power is uh, solar panels that are constructed with these, these square plates that are uh, accordion folded and joined with these mechanical hinges. Uh, but the problem is these, these traditional methods are bulky and they tend to be heavy and we just can't make them any bigger today than we, than we just can't make them any bigger. That's what it comes down to. So, um, so Rosa solves this problem by reducing mass by 20% and reducing stowed volume by 400% over these traditional approaches. Um, so there are some really cool applications. Uh, the, the commercial space industry, Space Systems Loral, for example, is considering Rosa for um, satellite TV, for satellite internet, and uh, communications spacecraft. Um, the Air Force is considering it for, to increase availability and access of GPS. And uh, perhaps more exciting is the fact that ROSA enables scale up to much larger wings. So currently we're limited to about 15 kilowatts per wing. Um, ROSA can scale up to 30, 100, or even 500 kilowatts per wing. 
and that opens up applications for things like solar electric propulsion. Um, you know, NASA is considering that for interplanetary missions. Um, certainly, the Air Force is interested from a LEO to GEO transfer perspective. Um, so that, there, there's some really cool applications for ROSA coming down the pike. But it's not just about solar arrays, actually. I mean, these high-strain composite materials are being considered for other deployable structures like reflector antennas and these radar antennas, um, solar sails even. So uh, ROSA is a pretty cool technology that, that we're really excited about the potential applications coming down the pike. And I believe you have an image to show where it is on station. Yes, thank you. So this is a position of ROSA on station. And if we go to the next image, you can see uh, two of the cameras that are pointing at the wing. So this is for the deployment and for the photogrammetry uh, data measurements that I, that I mentioned. So we'll just be hanging out. All right, and I, I know we have at least one question. Do you still have a question? That was it. Okay, <laughs> you got it answered. All okay. right, uh, we've got one question over here. So I'm curious, since obviously you only have the smaller models here, with the one that's actually going to be going to the space station, what is the width of the wing when it's fully rolled out? Five and a half feet. That's the... The like, width is the, five and a half feet. Oh, I, I guess I meant to say the thickness. The thickness of the wing. So the blanket itself, this is representative here. It's really only just a few millimeters thick. Even on the space station On station, one, it's gonna, yes. Wow. That's right. It's... It's a flexible blanket that has to be stiffened by tension mechanics, which is why you need the booms. Thank you. All right. Another one right there. So that's a beautiful design. Um, I am curious because engineers always plan for things that fail, and part of what you're looking at is the things that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. What are the problems that you're kind of anticipating and bracing for? It's a very good question. So I, I'm very careful to explain this as an experiment, not a demonstration. Those are very different. In an experiment, we, we anticipate the unanticipatable. So we instrument the heck out of the thing so that, uh, so that we can capture any behavior that, that we may not even expect. Um, so the dynamics is a big question mark. Um, how, do the, how does the fundamental frequency change when we move from testing on the ground to testing on orbit? And even testing in full sun versus full shadow, where is that center frequency going to be? And it's going to take some time for us to oscillate the wing at just the right frequency so that we can excite it and capture that frequency and that dynamics behavior. So that's probably one of the biggest uncertainties now that we really hope to learn. Thank you. All right, we've got one up here. So you had mentioned that this new um, this new design is able to do it um, longer and larger, um, and you said that the old traditional wasn't able to do that. What makes it so different? Is it just the size of the vehicle? And if it is, why not just make the vehicle bigger so you can fit more and more solar panels? Sure. So there's two issues, mass and volume. Um, uh, volume is the bigger limiter here. And if you notice, the stowed form factor of this is is short, but it is long. With a rigid panel array, they're long and wide, and they're also thick. So you're really limited by the, the surface area of the bus that you're mounting it to. And you can only stack so many panels up before you run into the volume limitations of your launch vehicle fairing. And you, you, you know, even adding additional wings on either side, there's been demonstrated uh, challenges on-orbit challenges with trying to deploy the wing in a complex way using these simple mechanisms. Uh, one final point to answer your question. Um, with these materials, they're so much different than traditional mechanisms in that they have some flexibility to them when they're, when they're deploying. You know, they have some give to them. So th that makes them um, much more amenable to much larger deployments because you don't have the, the risk of binding a hundreds of different hinges together because each hinge now has a little bit of compliance to it, a little bit of flexibility. Do we have other questions here in the room? Again, if you are following online and have questions, please use the hashtag AskNASA. We do have a question over here. The, um, as far as power production of this design, uh, the increase in size, um, 
in the big scale picture of human space exploration in the future, what does that translate into as far as what we may be able to accomplish that we can't accomplish now? And how did you guys come up with the description party favor? <laughs> party favor is a great one. The other one we've used is a, a paper towel roll with two tape measures on either side. So <laughs> it's whatever your analogy is. Um, so the, the space exploration question is one I'm not real qualified to answer since I represent the Air Force, not NASA. Um, but what, what I would say is solar electric propulsion is, is, a, is a great source of propulsion because it requires so little fuel. Um, so you can, you can travel much longer dis distances with, as long as your wing is large enough, you can generate enough power. So that's, I think, one of the simple answers to why it's, it's a useful technology for interplanetary type missions. All right, thank you very much.